Yo YouTube, what's up? I'm Tim. This is the Cash Kelly and AC Sports Report. With all that stuff from yesterday hopefully behind us, we move on to today's World Cup and another thing we would like to put behind us as Americans. First of all, if this is your first time watching one of our videos, please uh, subscribe at the top, like the video. Um, I have a feeling more people than usual will be watching this video because of the how big this event was. So. Let's get down to it. Basically, this is how it went. I mean, there were so many opportunities for the U.S. really to look at and say, well, they should have scored there. And I think that the U.S. even got some breaks because they seemed throughout the game to play a more physical game, almost to the point of being dirty sometimes. And they seemed to get away with it more in Japan. Uh, also, in regulation, there was an offsides called on uh, Japan that looked like they clearly, clearly would have um, scored there because they would have had a breakaway and they got c called offsides. That would be Japan when really they were clearly, clearly onsides. I mean, it's tough as an American to watch this. I, I gotta say, it, this is the best football match I've ever seen in my life, though, because. I mean, last year's uh, World Cup was tremendous for the men's side, but I think if you look at this, not only did it have, there was more scoring, a little bit more scoring, it wasn't like a blowout, and it was back and forth the entire game. When you thought Japan was out, they had the fight, and that's something that you looked at and you said about the U.S. the entire time, and in the end, it ended up being that uh, Japan was the one with the fight when it mattered. I mean, the U.S. did a horrible job at closing out these games, at, or closing out this game. They had a chance to do it in regulation, and they didn't do it. They had a chance to do it in overtime, and they didn't do it. And then when it came to penalty kicks, I'm sorry, you got to have your best shooter, Abby Wambach, shooting first, and they didn't have her doing that. So it really made no sense to me why you waited to have her fourth. She seemed like one of them who was cool and calm. I mean, that second shooter for the U.S., you shoot it over the goal, like, come on. That... This, to me, will go down as one of the biggest chokes in U.S. sports history because maybe the first time you can get away with it happening. Maybe you can look at it the first time and just kind of say, you know what, they came back. That doesn't necessarily make it a choke. But when you do it a second time in overtime, I mean, jeez. It was painful to watch this because the U.S. didn't seem to have that sense of Okay, we got to keep the ball on their side. Just because we're going in a defensive mode doesn't mean we let them have the ball the whole time and continue to go after it. Throughout this game, though, it seemed to me like the U.S. controlled the ball quite a bit at the time. And early on especially, they didn't take control of the opportunities. Japan, however, seemed like they didn't get the ball quite as much. But when they had the ball, they were putting it into play and scoring quite a bit. I mean, they didn't have nearly as many opportunities as the U.S., but when they did, it worked out pretty well. I mean, Alex Morgan did a tremendous job on that goal. But in the end, when it came down to it, I think we all knew that Hope Solo was not at 100% for the um, penalty kicks, and in the end, I think that that's what killed them. Really, I mean... I'm just responding to AC saying soccer's gay. But um, regardless, th there's a few other things I want to get to. Congratulations, Japan. It is nice to see them get a win here with what's been going on for their country. But um, looking at what um, Japan has gone through, it's nice to see them win and get through this. Or at least help to get through us. It's like when the, the Saints win in the Super Bowl, that type of thing. So... But uh, I was talking with some people during the game about uh, soccer could get big. Like, soccer seriously, in, in the U.S., it could get big. And I believe it'll t overtake hockey in this country in a couple years. And I said that to someone on Twitter, and he said, yeah, I agree too, but that, that doesn't really mean that anything's going to happen because soccer so, or uh, hockey's become so small in this country, we don't really even take that as anything. And let, let me digress just a second back into the game. 
I hate that there's no golden goal because the U.S. would have won, and there's nothing more exciting in any sport and any finish. Not a buzzer beater, not a walk-off home run, not anything like that than a golden goal going in. But it did not turn out to work out that way. And I think that the U.S., again, it was a choke job. There's no other way to put it. Now, I, I, back to soccer getting big. I think that soccer really could get big in this country because I remember last year at this time, you know, being online on Facebook and having people say, oh, soccer's stupid all year, but then they would be talking about it when it comes around to this game. A lot of people watch this, and I think if the U.S. men got in this, this is no shot at women, but people care more about men's sports, especially in America. If the men got into it and got this far, I mean, th this would make talent want to play soccer. And someone said to me during the game, the issue is that we don't have, A, all of our best athletes are playing football and basketball, and I agree with that, but take this, you're four or five years old, you're watching the World Cup with your dad, you, you don't really watch soccer, but you watch it, and that inspires you to go play soccer rather than go play football or go play basketball, and I think at that point some of the best um, talent would be playing soccer, and I think once the U.S. gets good at soccer, it's going to become more exciting to watch. And then he said, well, the U.S. doesn't have a league to compete with the Premier League and La Liga, and I, I agree with that completely. But A, the MLS, the product's got to get better. I, I really cannot watch the MLS. But the product has got to get better, and I think if you have better talent, it will get better. And even if you have players playing overseas, the bottom line is that the ones that are playing overseas will come back to America for the World Cup play here. And then after you see that happen, as a kid, you want to say, you know, I'm going to stay in this MLS, I'm going to help make this good, and I'm going to be one of the best players in the world for America. So I, I think soccer, in 15 years, I'm, I'm excited to see what can happen because I enjoy watching it, especially in a game like this. I know a lot of people don't, I do, but uh, I, I think that in the end, the U.S. choked this one away and it really sucks being from the U.S. But subscribe, whatever, I'll see you guys later.